quit going to Ivy because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, coming out of high school, I, I knew I liked science. Uh, I was pr particularly interested in physics and, and it wasn't until grade, probably early grade 12 that I got really interested in computer science. Um, but I wasn't sure that I wanted to do computer science like as my main degree, like I kind of wanted to do it with something else. Uh, and, and that kind of led me to, to think that I wanted to do some combination of computer science and business. Um, so I, I found that the particular like big, big selling feature of Ivy was that it had the two plus two structure. So it allows you to do two years of whatever uh, program that you want and then two years of Ivy, or if you wanna do a dual degree, you can like tack on years. So you could actually do a six year degree with law. Um, otherwise you do two years and then uh, one year of business and then two extra years of like combined business. So you end up with like a five year degree structure for two, two degrees. Um, I'm not doing that. I just did comp sci for two years and then business for two years. But I really was like attracted to the idea that uh, you could do something else for, for two years, kind of figure out what you want, get an introduction to university, and then use that kind of background, that extra skill set you've brought and bring that into the business program. And you're not like starting uh, business from scratch in first year and doing it for four years straight. Like you're, you're forming another perspective, learning a new set of skills, and then bringing that into the business program in third year. Uh, where you're surrounded by like th these incredible peers uh, that have done the same. I think there's something like uh, 55 different programs fed into my year of HBA1. So you have like all these people in this class with completely different perspectives, uh, completely different ways of analyzing the case. And it leads to some super interesting discussions um, because everybody either took something out of interest or took something um, to build an extra skill set. So, so you end up with these re really, really, uh, well-rounded peers who, who are capable of having really interesting and intelligent discussions with, with very different viewpoints. Uh, and, and part of that is because of this structure and, and this structure kind of was something that really drew me to uh, the business program at Ivy. So uh, it's case-based, the learning is case-based. So what, what that means is a lot of the learning is done independently. So like the actual, um, technical learning, you read the textbook yourself, you kind of figure it out on your own, solve the case, and then you basically bring that into the classroom for kind of validation as well as to hear how everybody else solved the case and really get into like the practical application um, of the teaching. So, so very rarely, uh, and it's only for very complex courses, do you ever have like lectures once you're in the IV program? So pretty much everything in third and fourth year is like very much case-based. You teach yourself the material and then you come to class with a solution to a case. And then you discuss your solutions with your peers and, and you see how everyone else did it. You see how the prof did it. Sometimes you're exactly right. Sometimes you're completely way off and, and you learn uh, a completely new way of thinking along the way. And um, they kind of ease you into that at the start of HBA one, where they put you in what's called learning teams, where it's not just you on your own trying to figure stuff out. You, you get put in a team of uh, like three to four of your peers and you solve your first probably 10 cases of the year together. So you kind of like, you work on it on your own, you meet with your learning team, uh, you discuss it with a few people and then you kind of have a better idea and you've built a bit of confidence in your solutions, in your understanding of the case before you go into the class. But but by the end of it, you're, you're pretty much individually case prepping and then going right into these classes to discuss, uh, which can get really, really interesting. So, so pretty standard of business, they kind of, the, there becomes a lot of emphasis that gets put on like the third year summer um, so the third year summer is, is coming from the idea that there's now like uh, recruiting once, hiring twice is what they call it. So it's you recruit in third year for your third year summer, sometimes even depending on the industry, you might even recruit before then, but you recruit in, in maybe late second to early third year, um, spe specifically I'm talking about investment banking, but um, you, you recruit late second, early third year for your third year summer. Um, and then that's kind of like an internship that either defines uh, if you get a return offer, what you do for the full time, uh, or, or it defines like kind of 
a piece of experience that you then use to like re-recruit for full-time recruiting near the end of your third year summer. But it, and again, like it's not like a, a hard, fast rule. Like just because people look at third year summers, like doesn't mean that you have to have an especially flashy summer experience. Like it's, it's easy to still do incredible things without it, but it's just becoming kind of a more standard thing. My second answer would be uh, coming out of Ivy, there's kind of two two main concentrations that I think get a lot of the hype, but that's not necessarily representative of um, where everybody actually goes into work. So historically, um, Ivy has made a lot of uh, investment banking and consulting positions. So a lot of Ivy students have gone into both of those fields. Um, but that's not necessarily representative of like where the bulk of Ivy students go. It generally is just like a something that a lot of people think that they want to do. Um, like, I, I won't get into it too much, but a lot of people end up finding themselves in lots of different industries, um, specifically because the dual degree program at Ivy is becoming more reputable. We're seeing a lot more like tech jobs these days. We're seeing more marketing jobs these days. Um, we're seeing a lot of different positions uh, just across the board in industry, not just in like advisory, like like consulting and banking. So HBA one, all the courses are pretty standard. So that would be in, in third year, uh, your courses are like preset for you. Um, preparing for HBA one, you have to take uh, 2257 in second year, which is an accounting course that's mandatory if you wanna go to Ivy. So that's just like a, something you've got to do. And then in first year, there's actually an Ivy course as well that isn't mandatory it's called 1220. And I would recommend that for anyone who's considering uh, going into Ivy because, well, it's not necessarily like you have to do it because it's helpful. Um, I think it's a good way to meet people that are also interested in Ivy two years before you actually like eventually meet them in the program. So like it, it allows you to kind of um, meet meet some like-minded people early that are trying to do the same things you're doing. Um, the the other reason I think that doing 1220 is useful is it it's kind of a good barometer for how you're feeling about actually going into Ivy because you you can kind of come to Western think you want to do Ivy but then if you don't like 1220 um, maybe you're not actually going to like Ivy because it's a pretty good uh, representation of what some of your classes are going to look like. Uh, it's, it's a bit more qualitative than some of the Ivy classes actually become but I think it's a pretty good like uh, a, a good acid test for whether or not you're actually going to like Ivy uh, and it's right at the start so I think it's a good uh, a good marker. How do you study for uh, the case method of learning? So I kind of touched on it earlier. Um, it, it's all about just like individual prep, making sure you understand the theories um, and, and making sure that you've done enough of the case to effectively listen and contribute, um, but not overdoing the case because you can definitely overdo the case and like think that you're right to uh too high of an extent and like really like come in with like a solution prepped and be like this is the right answer i've done all the math and like you you kind of once you're in that mindset you start tuning people out because you're like oh oh i've come up with this solution i've done all the quant i spent hours on this case i know i'm right and i'm gonna listen less intently to other people because i'm just waiting to talk um, I would recommend spending less time on cases, just having like a, a pretty, not rudimentary, but a comprehensive, but not overly comprehensive view of each case. Uh, and then, you know, raising your hand for points, but also spending a lot of time, like listening to other people's perspectives, because um, uh, there's a great quote for this, but, but the best perspective is the one that you didn't know. Right. It's it's the the best thing that that gets said in the class isn't get it isn't what gets said by you, it's what you kind of listen to, um, by by actively listening and just like taking time to to reflect on other people's answers instead of constantly just thinking like what's what am I gonna say, like the best classes are the classes where you say nothing because you're just so focused on like what everyone else is saying and you're learning so much that. Uh, you, you don't have time to think of anything for you to say. Uh, I, I truly believe that like the best thing that can help you success be successful at Ivy is just like 
listening really, really well, like being prepared to listen and then actively making the decision to just like listen to how other people came up with the answer instead of like constantly focusing on trying to give the answer. So how is the university experience beyond academics? Uh, that's a tough one to answer post COVID. Um, so, so pre COVID, I guess, is the disclaimer I put onto all my answers, but I lived in uh, Elgin Hall, which is a suite style residence. Uh, so I was with three roommates um, and we had like a shared common area, but we all had like single rooms. Uh, I, I really, really like that format. I really like my roommates. Um, the one kind of downside to that compared to a traditional residence is I don't think that you're as close to your floor as, as otherwise you would be because um, on a traditional like style, if you have your door open, like walking through the, the hall, you just like see someone and you start up a conversation. Whereas there's kind of an additional barrier um, because you're like one layer removed. Because if you just open up your door, it goes to the common area and you have to be like out in the common area and not in your room for somebody to be able to like initiate like a social like engagement with you. So um, I guess it's it's not quite as close with your floor, um, but I still found like we had a good experience because we kind of made stuff happen and we like made people, not maybe, but like we like still, still found excuses to gather um, as much as possible. Uh, other than that, I, I did a lot of extracurriculars. I think that Western students in general um, seek out a lot of extracurriculars and create a lot of those experiences. Like I think that there's um, over 200 clubs or something at, at Western. There's clubs at Ivy. Um, there's, there's varsity teams. Uh, a huge part of, of Ivy students is the extracurriculars that, that you kind of have to do to get in because there is like the limit of uh, I think you need at least three extracurriculars to actually make it into HVA1. Um, so you end up with having a, a lot of people looking for these extracurricular experiences and, and making things kind of happen. So you end up with like people coming up with clubs, people coming up with these events. Uh, people are always doing stuff. So it's pretty easy to like get involved and stay involved. Um, which, which makes for a really like dynamic experience. Like I would say that most of what I did in second year was not school. It was uh, all of my extracurriculars, which, which were quite fun. There's a, there's a bit of a distinction that has to be made here because there's kind of like Western support and then there's like Ivy support. Uh, so once you kind of get into Ivy, there's additional layers of support. The program services office is like incredibly, incredibly supportive. Uh, there's academic counseling. They, they have a whole bunch of like mental health resources um, that they put on themselves that they can link you to that isn't necessarily like through the school. Um, so, so there's a bit of like a benefit there, but even the baseline Western resources are pretty okay. Um, th there's constantly people around that can help, which is something that no matter what university you go to, you, you kind of uh, should know is that, is that there's always people around you that you could go to with a problem. Um, I, I just think that there's a, there's an added benefit that Ivy puts on a lot of those resources for you, but no matter where you go, there there are always gonna be people there that can help you. Um, for, for career support, there is, uh, Ivy has career management, uh, which is a huge thing. So um, at Western, they kind of have like career services. I don't, I don't even know how that works, but Ivy career management is like, almost the level of being like in your face all the time. Like it's it's a very prevalent thing. They run mocks, they run se seminars, they bring in companies. Like it's a very, it's almost like you're on rails and they're like trying to get you a job. Like there's a very structured process uh, for that. Uh, financial supports, there's, there's lots of bursaries and stuff that you can apply through Western. But then again, and then I'll go back to the theme of like there being extra at Ivy. Like there's uh, a lot of financial supports directly for Ivy. Um, that's, that's all I'll say on that. That's a tough one. Uh, I, I would say, uh, call your parents more. Um, that would be my piece of advice. I think in first year I, I got very, and, and probably every successive year, every year I like started the year, got really into it, got into all my extracurriculars, got really wrapped up in my friends. And probably every year 
I like let a few old friends slip or, or let some family members like slip because I wasn't keeping in very good contact. And I feel like I personally have a tendency to get really like wrapped up in things and sometimes uh, let a few things go. So, so maybe don't overwhelm yourself too much. Um, don't, don't sign up for too much, like learn, learn how to say no to some things and, and make sure that you're not like letting any relationships go by the wayside that you don't want to.